We are continuing our journey on the agrarian renaissance today, tanning some hides. As part of our journey on the agrarian renaissance, that is raising our own animals, harvesting our animals, getting as much yield from the animal as possible out of respect for the animal, and then cooking it well. So one of the elements of using as much as the animal as we can is using the hide. The hide in most cases is best tanned. So we've gone over to my friend Sean's house where he does high tanning and that's a service you're actually providing my lamb customers yep. this year. Last week uh, we met up and I gave you the hides from our first harvest mm -hmm. which were our rams and then I've just brought over here today the a few of the hides from our second harvest which were our ewe lambs which were noticeably smaller as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be able to take a look at the process you've already started with the rams and then also look at what's starting fresh today with the hides I just brought you, right? right? Yep. Okay. First order of business is putting on some uh, rubber pants here to keep my clothes clean. It can get a little, a little messy. Let me uh, turn the hose on over here so I can give it a rinse. I'm not so worried about the, um, you know, pieces of grass or chips or something that are pretty easy to get them out. And blood isn't such a big deal for dark colored wool right. like this. The white, white fleeces, if they have blood on it and the blood's left on there during this whole process, it can, uh, it can stain the wool. So. Mm. Just try to get as much of it out as we can. Just try to get as much of this out as we can. I try not to get the whole hide just, you know, sopping yeah. wet because it does need to dry out as it's sitting there with the alum solution on it. Mm -hmm. Because if it sits there wet too long, it will um, it'll start to decay and the hair, uh, the wool will start to slip. Good. That's the nice thing about the brain tanning that I do with the deer skins is you, you want the hair to come out. So it's actually part of the process is getting all the hair to fall out. Even when you get most of the meat and fat off in the skinning process, there's still a thin layer there that has to be scraped off with the fleshy knife. Just opening the neck up here. And the tail. So this is a fleshing knife here, it's kind of like a, almost like a woodworker's draw knife, yeah. but um, more just straight across. It has a blade on this edge and on this edge, so you can use it either way. I usually prefer it with the con convex side down. So how, how do you avoid cutting through the hide with that? It's really just a matter of practice. Um, knowing, well, for one, knowing a hide, knowing that, uh, you know, the belly and leg areas are the thinnest, uh -huh. the neck and down the middle of the back and the rump are the thickest part. Uh -huh. So those areas you can work on them a little harder and not have to worry about tearing through. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then just knowing how much pressure to apply with the knife. Yeah. I find that I don't keep it really sharp. Right. It's it's really kind of like a doll. Yeah. It's quite dull. When I work on su okay. certain animals, like a buffalo hide, uh -huh. and the, all this, you know, uh, 
guess you call it fascia, yeah. is really sticking to the hide. It actually helps to have a sharp blade for certain animals like that. So yeah. you can almost like do a slicing action and, right. and get that off. Right. But with, a, with sheep hides, deer hides, goats, really you can just work with kind of a dull edge. You could even do this with just a machete, you know, with the end of it jammed in a block of wood for another handle on the yeah. other side. In the past, I've used sort of uh, woodworkers draw knives and machetes and sort of improvise things and really it's it's more comfortable to have a proper draw knife it versus looks very a fleshy efficient. knife. So how long did this take you when you first got started? You know, it looks like you're doing it really quickly. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that takes a while when you're first starting is not knowing how much pressure is safe to apply and yeah being real cautious, overly cautious of not tearing the hide and so you sort of, you, you take a lot longer yeah. doing that. Um, and I've had my share of hides that I screwed up because I pushed too hard on it or my knife was too sharp and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't even know how many uh, critters I've skinned and flesh these days. It's been quite a few and I've had a lot of practice so wow it's really not that hard of a thing to learn but you do get more efficient at it as you go yeah so sometimes these tiny thin edges out here right tear off like you saw that little piece tore off there I think it's a part of a of the leg that's not a big deal usually with sheep hides when you do tan them for the purpose of making a, a rug or a throw for a a chair or something you don't really leave the the extremities right. you know you want to kind of want a shape to it yeah it's going to be more of like just a long a, like a big oval shape right so i don't i don't go to too much trouble of fleshing the very ends of the legs so how did you get into tanning i got into tanning i think it was back in probably 2005 or six oh, wow. i I went out to an event in Rexburg, Idaho called the Rabbit Stick Rendezvous. Uh-huh. And it's a primitive skills gathering that happens for a week out there every September. Really amazing event. And uh, I learned brain tanning there and my first deer hide. Uh-huh. And I just, I was just hooked after that. And next thing I know, I'm just picking up every kind of roadkill I could find and tanning <laughs> it and practicing. Um, so, so yeah, it's been since then, and and then the method that we're going to use for these sheep hides is called alum tanning or uh -huh. or alum tawing, T A W I N G. Okay, um, I haven't heard that word before. What does that mean? So tawing is a when you use aluminum sulfate and salt to tan a hide with. You're actually it's not a true tanning method. Uh -huh. A lot of taxidermists use it, and people who are tanning furs. Um, because it helps to really lock in the fur in the hide. Okay. And um, it's not a true tanning method in that it basically is just like a way of salting the hide and preserving it. Oh. But if you washed it a few times, you'd wash that solution out and the hide would get stiff, like raw hide. Right. Um, but the cool thing about it is that it does, it makes the hide really soft if it's done right. It's pliable, it you know can be used for a, a rug or a taxidermy mount and um, it's pretty non-toxic stuff. Aluminum sulfate right. people use it in their gardens to uh, acidify the soil for azaleas and such mm -hmm. and it's uh, sometimes an ingredient in uh, pickles, it's alum, oh. to make pickles huh. crisp. Uh -huh. I, it's probably not something you'd want to eat in quantity, you right. know. I would say it's probably not an ideal tanning method if you wanted to make it. But uh, for for all the sheep hides I do, I end up just using them as uh, throws for our couch or a, a rug, and for sure. I don't really wash them. If they get a little bit of something on the wool, I just spot wash the wool by hand. There's no, there shouldn't really be any need to wash the flesh side of it. Yeah. I don't fuss about getting the wool clean until I'm ready to get all the alum off of it. And then how do you dry it? Then I. In the summer months, I'll just put it in the shade somewhere right. and let it start to slowly dry out. And then you have to um, 
as it's drying and starts to um, go from being wet to just kind of damp, you pull on it, uh -huh. you stretch it like this, and it's amazing. The hide will go from this kind of dark bluish color to just white, and the fi you'll just oh, wow. see the fibers just go like this and open up and get soft right. and pull apart, and then they just stay that way. Huh. So, um, and it's a lot more forgiving kind of method than when I do brain tanning with the deer skin, you just have to constantly keep agitating it until it's completely dry. If it's damp Ooh. at all and you let it you stop and let it dry out, it'll be a stiff there. Oh. With, with the alum, you can sort of just do a, you know, little stretching on it from time to time, come back to it, stretch a little more, and it'll come out nice and soft. We have super washing soda. You can get at any grocery store. It's regular old non-iodized salt. Some cornmeal hmm. and high aluminum yield sulfate. Of aluminum sulfate. Wow. Um, so, I mean, it says keep out of reach of children. Obviously, you wouldn't want to like just consume the stuff. If you get it on your hands, it sort of has this weird astringent feeling, where um, it feels like the pores have just gone and like sucked up. And that's why they use it in pickles to make them crisp. That's why it's good for tanning uh, furs because it helps to really oh, cinch funny. up that skin and keep the fur locked in the hide. So <clears throat> all this stuff is mixed in a bucket here with a bit of water to make a paste. I basically made up my own recipe for this. The cornmeal is, is in there to make a, a binder, a thickener to make it into a paste form. Starting to run out of floor space here, but um, that's right. I like to do this laid out somewhere. The good thing about doing it on a concrete floor is it's, you know, it's kind of got, it's refrigerating the hide. It's keeping that, keeping it cool even if I'm doing this in warmer months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put this uh, paste on here, my alum solution. When this dries, um, it'll be more of a, a powder on here, and that's when I can just shake it off of there. And then when it's in that powder form, I can also use it on a fresh hide like this and just sprinkle it on like salt, and it works that way too. Because I just needed to make up a new batch here, I have this, it's more of a liquid paste form right now. So because the wool is still wet on these from me having to wash some of the blood out, um, <clears throat> I don't want to leave the hide just down against the ground here damp because it, it could start to uh, cause the fur, the wool I should say, to slip and fall out on that side. So what I'll do is when this alum paste has dried a little bit in the next couple days I'll flip one side over and make basically fold the hide in half down the back line there and let one side dry and then flip it over and let the other side dry. And that's what you've done here with these two hides from yeah, last that's week. that's why they're folded over like that. Uh, a lot of The way a lot of people skin is when they skin down the legs of the animal, they'll skin from basically like the middle of the leg. It's better to go to the front of the front leg and skin on the front line of the front leg mm. and the back line of the back leg and you'll get the most square shape out of the hide. You can see how this one kind of goes in around the armpits mm -hmm. here. If that was skinned more in that way, you wouldn't have as much of this and you'd have a bit more of a, a square shape to mm -hmm. it. So, like the one there, you can right. see how that has, you just get got more it. surface area from it, not as much of this kind of weird, uh, shape to the perimeter of it. The hide gets the alum tanning paste on it mm -hmm. and then you're gonna flip one side over to, to let the wool side dry and then yeah. vice versa which is what's going on right here so what happens after this stage yeah so um you can see the wool is still really dirty it's got mm -hmm. you know, this dirt on it from the sheep uh, when it was alive and then some of this alum you know 
it, little this is all over it on both sides. So I need to get that washed off and I need to get the wool clean. So what I'll do is um, empty all of this off of here, just pour it off into a bucket, and then take the hide and I usually put it in a, a bath of warm water, like in a big Rubbermaid bin, and put some shampoo on it. And I'll start to just shampoo the wool, just kind of working it in there over the whole thing to um, soften up, you know, the the uh, lanolin on it and the mm -hmm. chunks of dirt that are in it and everything. Usually rinse it a couple times and then um, I get out a series of different combs that I have. Just basically like dog brushes, you know, mm -hmm. that people use for combing their dogs. And just comb them and get everything out that way. So, uh, if the, you know, if the hide is pretty clean to begin with, it's a lot easier, it's less work for me to have to do when the, that step comes along. So this hide is preserved now like this, it's just, it's the same as salting it basically, mm -hmm. but with the added advantage of when you're ready to, you can tan it. Right. Um, the problem with salting, you put all that salt on it, it's just preserved until you're ready to clean all that off and then go through the whole tanning process. But this is already ready to tan now. I just clean it off, wash it, and washing it also will help to soften it all back up again. And then I let it slowly dry somewhere in the shade. In the winter here, I'll probably keep my stove going in my shop. And just um, as it starts to dry out, I'll check on it every few hours, pull on it a little bit, open the fibers of the hide up, and just keep giving it a stretch. Usually the, the belly and the legs, because those are the thinnest, they're going to dry out the fastest, whereas the neck and the midline of the back are the thickest parts and they're going to be the last part to dry. That's a an alum tanned elk hide there. And uh, this didn't come out particularly soft. It's, you know, it's like, it's a little bit stiff. But uh, if you were to just lay this out on the floor as a rug, it would work perfectly fine sure. for that. And, it's, you know, it doesn't have any weird smell to it or anything. It's come out quite clean. You can see the hunter didn't do a perfect job skinning it. It does have some holes in it. And everything, it's but small though. Being a, you know, a fur on hide, you don't see most of those holes. So these are a couple of my brain tan deer skins that are tanned in the, in the manner that basically all the tribes across North America tanned hides for thousands of years. Um, and the, the light colored one is not smoked yet, that's just been softened. And then the darker one here has been smoked and this, you can see what, how the smoking changes the color of it. What are the marks from? The marks are uh, scars on the, oh. under the fur. So a lot so maybe of- Maybe from fighting or something? No, most deer have them down at their rump from going under barbed wire fences. That makes sense. So, it's really common to see right down at their backside a few scars and sometimes going up the line of the back. Huh. And the older the deer, you know, you're usually going to have more of them. So uh, here's a few of the alum tan sheep hides finished. Um, both of these are some dark colored sheep wow. here. Um, you can see how the fleece looks after being washed and combed. They pick up a lot of dirt in the house, you know, everything seems to stick to them, but um, there's a white one. This one, I think this is one of the first ones I ever did. So you can see how this, this is probably five or six years old now. And see how it's held up. The hide that you just started today under ideal conditions, meaning you don't have a million other side projects pop yeah. up, what would be the length of time to get it to this state here? Uh, I could probably, I'll probably let the alum stay on it for a week. Um, make sure the wool's all dry after I wash the wool. Um, and then I'll, I'll wash it and shampoo it, you know, do that. And by, probably by the next day, start stretching it to make it finish like this. Because when you do that washing process, then you've, you've washed all the, the alum off of it and uh, it's soft and you're, it's ready to start stretching as it dries. So a week and a half? Maybe a week and a half, yeah.